Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited. I'm here tonight with my beautiful model, Sarah, and we're gonna do a full face makeover on her today, start to finish live for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with her brows so you can face forward. Yes. I worked on this one a little bit before we started. So we are gonna be adding a little bit of hair over here. So I'm gonna start with pencil and then I'm gonna powder it when we're done. Yes. The product of overplucking, really. <laughs> I know, we were talking about that. Yes, children of the 90s. It's a generational thing. It was just it a is. bad era for brows. It really was. Like, they just didn't recover. No, no, and we didn't bounce back. It's <laughs> a real problem. So about eyebrows, I was curious. I was like in the Ulta store the other day, mm -hmm. and there's like a billion eyebrow options like they have gels they have powders they have pencils what's what's the best so some of it's preference and it depends on what you're doing for you since you you fill in your brows every day right i have to <laughs> obviously <laughs> and you when you're adding hairs that aren't there i definitely like a gel or a pencil because it sticks to the skin a lot better mm -hmm. powder looks more natural but sometimes it doesn't wear well unless you have really dry skin i feel like the powder starts to fade and then you're mm -hmm. left with just only the brow where it had, yeah it yeah. looks patchy so usually, like what I'm gonna do on you, I'm gonna use a pencil and then add a little powder to soften it. But if you can get good, like if you're pretty comfortable doing your brows, I would go for like the gel, like the pomade, because that stays all day. You just have to have a soft hand with it because it can be look a little harsh, like it's bold. Have you mm -hmm. ever played with it before? I haven't, that's one thing I haven't done. I've played with the powders before, but I had that same problem of it rubbing off. So I've gone more to a pencil, and then I've also found like powder pencils, Ooh, which was cool. kind of a new thing. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, I'm experimenting. I'm that. very cutting edge that way. I love it. Try the pomade. And Ulta and Sephora both have good return policies, so you can try it and if it's not. Do you have a certain Your brand jam. you would recommend? I love this brand. It's Anastasia of oh. Beverly Hills. She's like the brow queen. She's the like, brow she queen? She was like the original brow queen in Hollywood. Like everybody went to her and she created her own line of products and they're just so awesome. She has, it's called Dip Brow, it's like a pomade and it seriously stays all day. Like you sleep, you wake up and if your brows are still really? like, if you didn't wash your face. I would love that, <laughs> that would be ideal. Yeah, it's super good and you do not have to powder finish with that. And where can you buy it at? You can get that at Ulta, I believe. For oh. sure Sephora, I'm pretty sure Ulta has it too. And she sells um, brow brushes too, so they're an angle brush like this. Okay, I've seen those and then before. hers have a little spoolie, like a naked mascara one on the end, oh. so you can brush through it, like okay. on the same thing. So hers are my favorite. And she has one, I think it's number 12 or number seven, and it's really, really sharp. Mm. So you can kind of draw like little hairs oh, with the brush. Nice. And then it looks way more natural. And it's, it's quick, it sounds harder than it is to draw <laughs> little hairs in. So what's your approach to brows? Like, do you fill in first, outline later? Do you outline first, fill in? Like outline with concealer and stuff? Is that what you're talking no, about? No, like when oh, you're actually trying to shape them. Okay, like, how do you saying. do it? If I want like a bold look, then, I, um, then I'll outline first and then draw little hairs on the inside. But um, when you're starting off, like if you go get the pomade, I would kind of start by drawing the little hairs and mm -hmm. then outline. Like I definitely like a good line underneath the brow. Mm -hmm. I like that to be sharp and then the top to look a little bit softer. Cause then it looks more natural. If you have a really harsh like line up there, it looks oh, a little bit I never harder. thought about that, but yeah. You can always have a nice clean line underneath. That's usually what I do. That's good to think about. Yeah. And then do you use anything to set the brow? With the pomade, you don't need to. Like it, it's self-setting. It'll just dry a little bit and set. Um, with this brow pencil I do, I'm setting it with the powder. But again, that depends on your skin tone too. The, the pencil I used on you is the ColourPop brand and they're pretty creamy so they don't really set. But um, Anastasia, that same brand, her pencils are a little more dry, mm. so they, they wear a little bit longer. Like the creamier it is, probably the less wear you'll get. But if it's kind of like a drier pencil, you'll get longer wear. Something else I've wondered is how do you determine the fill color? 
for your eyebrow. I've read like different things that say go a shade darker than your hair color, go a shade lighter than your hair color. So how do you determine what color to get and to fill in your eyebrows with? I usually go a shade lighter Okay. because I don't like the brows to look too harsh. Mm -hmm. Like for you, you could do the light brown or just the regular brunette, I think. I usually kind of match the hair color. Mm -hmm. And then what you have like your brows in here are fairly dark, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't go too much lighter. I'd probably go with just the brunette. And usually another good tip is like you want it darker from the arch to the tail because oh. that's what kind of fades away visually and usually mm. the, the front is naturally dark. Just the, so like you don't mine. want to fill in <laughs> that too much. <laughs> Everybody is, is that way. Okay, so what are you doing now? So I am mixing two concealers. This is Tarte Shape Tape. One's a really fair pink base mm -hmm. and one has a little bit of like a golden undertone. So I'm going to mix those up and I'm going to prime your eyelid to prepare it for the shadows. Oh. And I'm just going to go around your brows. So I'm going to take this like concealer brush because it has a really sharp edge. And I'm just going to draw a nice sharp line like right under your brows to kind of clean them up. And then I'm going to prime your eyes with this. So you use concealer to prime the eye? I do, unless someone's really oily or like their shadows don't wear throughout the day. I almost always use concealer, unless it's a wedding. Like if I'm doing an event or a wedding where I want it to be like bulletproof, I'll use actual concealer. But for just normal makeup or even like me, day-to-day -day, concealer sign, like it lasts the whole day. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I never even thought to like prime my eyes for my eyeshadow. It makes a big difference. Go ahead and close. It helps the um it helps the shadows to go on a lot easier and like more like they don't look patchy. Mm -hmm. Like on some people have you ever seen people and they have kind of like patchy yes. eyeshadow? It helps so much if you prime it first. It makes a big difference. So how far do you go down with the concealer? So do you go all over the lid too I or do. just around the eyebrows? I do. So I'm going all around the eyebrows just so that when I add your foundation in I don't, like I can blend it up to your eyebrows without messing them up. Oh, that's a good idea. So that's why I do it. You don't have to do this personally. I don't, to my, when I do my own makeup, I do my brows after my foundation just to mm -hmm. save time, but it looks really, really clean if I do this on clients. And you could just use any kind of concealer? Yeah, as long as it's not really creamy, like if it comes in a pot, it's like a cream concealer. Um, it would probably crease, but this one dries fairly matte and it's pretty thin. Mm. So concealers like that, like long wearing concealers. What kind of concealer do you use? Um, I probably favor like Revlon products because mm -hmm. I just haven't made the plunge to go get like the really fancy stuff. And it's so expensive that when I don't know the exact colors or products to get, it's like I'm not going to take a chance on going and buying the super expensive stuff that's going to wind up being the wrong color or a long you know, the wrong fit for me. Yes. So I've always wanted to like go get nice makeup, but I've never wanted to waste the money so maybe you could tell me which ones I should use Julie. This one I love. This one is um, Tarte Shape Tape. I like it because it's really opaque and it dries pretty matte. Um, if your skin is more dry, it is. I really like um, NARS Creamy Radiance Concealer. That's a really good one because it, it's very long wearing, but it's like kind of hydrating. Like it doesn't, oh. some people's under eyes like need extra hydration and I feel like concealer can dry it out. That's what my eyes need. Like if I could probably pin down the place on my face that gives away my age, it's my eyes. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend I do um, first skincare wise to prevent this from getting worse? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a good moisturizer. So here's the thing, like skincare is definitely like worth spending money. Like it's almost better that you spend money on good skincare than even like good makeup, I think. Really? Mm-hmm. 
but you want to pick where you invest like um moisturizers or something you want to invest in a good one or like serums like with retin-a or something to anti-aging exfoliating mm. stuff but like facial cleansers you can go drugstore because that if you think about it it doesn't sit on your face yes. you just wash it off yes and i have a good facial cleanser yeah. but it doesn't make me break out or do anything so what moisturizers what brands would you recommend i really love the Murat line. They have a really good hydrating moisturizer that I like. I love um, Sony Roselli. She has this product called Water Bomb. That's what I put on you, oh. actually. And it's what I like about it is I feel like it penetrates really deep without being greasy. Like, have you ever used a really yes. heavy moisturizer? And you feel like you lather it on, but it doesn't even go in. Yes, like it's, it's just, just sitting it's there, there on the surface, and you can, like, yeah. touch it 30 minutes later, and you still feel yes. residue. Yeah, I hate that. So hers is good for that. Like, it's really hydrating, but it's it's light. Like, it's like um, an Asian-inspired mm. found, or skincare product, and there's a really good... And where can you buy these skin products? Because I, these brands, I'm not reckon, I'm not remembering or seeing them. I will. Places. I'll write them in the description so you can check later. But um, Murad, you can get at Sephora. Okay. Maybe Ulta. I'm not as familiar with the Ulta brands. And then Sonia Roselli, the water bomb, my favorite one. She's online. Go ahead and close. She has a website. I think it's SoniaRoselli.com, and then I think she also sells on Amazon too. So if you're like Amazon Prime, which mm -hmm. I am, I love yes, it. Yes, I am. You I can love get it. her on Prime. on Prime, and that one seriously is my favorite because it's a multi-use product. You can use it um, for a primer too. Oh, so okay. So you put it on as your moisturizer, and then it, it smooths your skin so that the foundation goes on smoother. And where should you be applying moisturizer? Um, All over your face, your neck? Should we be yeah, doing that too? Yeah, definitely do your neck. The only place I don't put a lot is the nose, mm -hmm. just because the skin is so thin and it doesn't get too dry. I'll put a little bit, but I feel like if I put on too much moisturizer on the nose, the makeup won't stick. So are there any products that you can think of that work that help with reducing the appearance of like crow's feet or like under your eyes, the little baggies you can have sometimes when you wake up with no sleep, like yeah. I do with four kids <laughs> all the time. Sorry, mom life. <laughs> um, <laughs> little eye masks help. Like sometimes they sell eye treatments in a little patch, so you uh -huh. just like put the patch on at night for 20 minutes and it absorbs. Oh. It's a really good one, and I'm like blanking on the brand. I'll have to look it up after. And tell you but those are good and honestly just keeping that area hydrated like that that water bomb I was telling you about that's really good for under eyes because it's a really thin concealer like you can use it in the morning and then still put foundation over it and it won't crease like sometimes I've noticed if people use a really thick eye cream and mm -hmm. then put makeup over it like it gives people who don't even have crow's feet crow's feet because it creases yeah so in the day you want to use a thinner one at night you can do a really heavy one so you don't need separate moisturizers for your eyes because I noticed there's a lot of people that sell products that are they're like oh these are specifically designed for your under eye yeah or over so, eye <laughs> that's a great debate obviously you know skincare companies want to sell you more products but mm -hmm. usually they're eye friendly too the only problem that I found is like I was telling you like sometimes they're just too heavy to wear makeup over mm -hmm. but usually your night cream go ahead and close is good to put under eye under your eyes as well unless okay. it has like retin-a certain anti-aging things like exfoliants you don't they'll say on the bottle like don't use near the eye but if it doesn't say that you can okay good to know good to know so in terms of applying makeup what kind of techniques do you use to try to mask some of the aging issues people so have with their eyes everyone has like the under eye I feel like anybody over like 23 mm -hmm. like worries about the under eye of area course. depending on the shape of your face because I feel like we see online people putting so much powder under there like baking and layers mm -hmm. of concealer to like highlight and contour and it just accentuates it so I definitely like to hydrate it really well first and then just do like as light as possible like all you want is a light wash of coverage you don't need a like put a ton of product Thick on it. It's not better. You don't want to. It's not better. And I'm going to use a matte product on you that's like a really thin, it's kind of like a radiance pin. So it adds like a little bit of glow and hydration and it gives a little coverage. And that's really good for like dry skin, like drier under eyes.
And I'm just doing like a light wash of color on her eyes. We're gonna do a really pretty smoky eye. And then I'm gonna show you guys how I like to warm up their skin. Me and Sarah were bonding over our paleness because yes. <laughs> and I think I'm more fair than you. Oh, but I find that hard to believe, <laughs> Julie. But I'm gonna show you some good trips. I, I love pale skin. I think it's super pretty, but it's nice to add a little warmth that makes you look yeah. more, more glowy. Yes, I just need you there on the beach <laughs> so that you can make my legs look less glowy. Okay, have you used the Sally Hansen leg lotion? Oh, I have. Do you like it? Yeah, it works. It works. Which one did you use? Go ahead and post. Did you use the... Oh, I don't the... think it was Sally Hansen. I've used Jergens. Okay. What have you used with Sally Hansen? Okay, so Sally Hansen is the best invention ever. I discovered it when I was like 18. I'm like, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> pale, like, pale girl problems. It like, it's kind of like a body makeup, honestly. Like, they call it like... I don't know what it is like it has a picture of legs on the bottle okay and it is it gives you coverage and it gives you a little glow so the one for light skin just adds like a, like a warm color and it like lightly masks like imperfections like any discoloration anything so does it, it work you, on cellulite yeah it's seriously <laughs> amazing and it sticks so good like you, it's not made for this, but you can get in the pool with it, and it will stay on. <laughs> it works so good. Like, when I was younger, I don't care anymore. Like, I like being like, pale. But I would literally put it everywhere and then go to the pool, and I'm like, I'm so tan. Yeah, like, I think it's so great. So awesome. Like, I feel like the reason people like a tan is because, go ahead and close, it covers everything. It does. It just kind of evens you out. It makes you look like you went to the gym. I know. Like, everyone can see good. my lack of gymnast <laughs> because of my pale skin. It's a dead giveaway. Okay, use the Sally Hansen. It's a little bit weird to work with because it's kind of thick. So you spray it. You can get the spray or you can get the liquid. I like the liquid. Okay. And you rub it in your hands and you just have to keep circular rubbing it until there's no more streaks. But then it stays really good. Do you good. use like a tanning mitt or do you nope, just use your hands? I just totally hands? use my hands and then I wash my hands. And it's the really the best thing that ever happened to me. I love it so much. I used to wear it every Sunday. <laughs> I totally don't. You've never seen me wear it now, but I would wear it with my, do it. my skirts. And then you're going to be like, wow, Sarah, your legs look amazing Sarah, today. Incredible. <laughs> All right. I'm best. waiting for the compliments, everyone, on Sunday. <laughs> I can't yeah, wait to Does see Target you. carry it? Yep. Since I'm at Target like three yep. times a week. I usually get like the medium or the deep dark. <laughs> but they have a light, which I would probably <laughs> I'm going to look like really pale <laughs> up here. So I'm going to be like, but my arms and legs look amazing. <laughs> oh, you can put it everywhere. So Maybe funny. I'll wear it with you on Sunday. I'll wear the deep dark and I'll, I'll come up to No, you. I think I'll make me more insecure, Julie, because I won't have it on. You have, we have to coordinate. Look down for me. So I'm going to do a lot of liner on you. I'm doing brown liner so it doesn't look too harsh, but I'm going to go all in your water lines and all the way around. I have questions about liner. Okay, let's hear them. To liner or not to liner <laughs> all the time. Okay, so top liner always, definitely. Okay. And how thick to go? Because I've seen people that are like, Whoa. yeah, you can go, on your eyes. You can go fairly thick. But my thick eyes if you are very large. Down. Doesn't that make them look like bug eyes if I go like? That's actually why I like the liner. I feel like if you keep it really close to the lash line, like I'm going in your waterline, which is like what the skin right under your lashes is called. Um, if you go there, it kind of. Um, so you're going under my lashes yeah, to apply yeah. it. It's going to smoke it out and make your eyes look a little more intense. Is that where being... you should always apply your eyeliner? Under the lash line? On you, I really like it. So on you, I'm going to go under and over. Go ahead and close. Noted. I'm going to do that. you will see the difference and you will love it. And what color should a person go with? Is it based on your eye color, your hair color? Is it based on the makeup palette you're working with? Kind of everything, but I would actually say for day to day, the biggest go ahead and close is um, your skin tone and how you do your shadow. Like your shadow always looks nice. I feel like you always do like a light smoky eye, mm -hmm. so you can always do liner. But I would try go ahead and close brown. And this is actually I think it's Maybelline. Let's see, 
Yeah, it's Maybelline Eye Studio. I don't keep a okay. lot of drugstore products in my kit, but this one's so good. Like, it works just as good as any high-end gel liner that I've used. Awesome. And their brown is, like, my favorite color because it's, really, mm -hmm. it's really deep. I don't know. It just looks like a really nice natural liner color. Go ahead and close. It's my favorite brown because sometimes they're too orangey mm -hmm. or, like, too kind of ashy, and this one's, like, the So what brown. shade is it called? I don't tell you. I'm just curious. Brown. <laughs> it's called brown. Really? They couldn't come up with anything better? They should hire me. I could come up with all kinds of fun names. They'd probably be like literature inspired names that no one would understand. Oh, that would be awesome. I'd be calling it the Mr. Darcy. Oh, I love it. Be the best. Yeah, that's like, if you have your makeup line, the greatest gift of all is naming your shade. Right? And they went brown. Down. They called it brown. But I must say, it is like the best brown liner shade I've ever used. So maybe they're just like, we've nailed it. We're calling it brown. We have arrived. <laughs> this is brown. It's fine. Go ahead and look down. You're doing really good. I don't know if you've ever lined the waterline before, but you're totally not like fidgeting. I wear Thank contact you. lenses. True. I'm so experienced. Contact lenses, yeah. To get you used to anything. I know, plus sometimes my kids get really close to my face. <laughs> point my, their fingers oh in my, my eyeball. Gosh, so so I'm not afraid. I've been That's desensitized. Good. That is good. Yeah, like Jane went through this eye phase where she learned how to say eyes and she knew where they were. Mm -hmm. So she'd like go right up to you and you'd want her to point to her own eyes. Yes. But instead, she just go and she poke you in the eye, eyes. and you're like, no. <sighs> "Let's learn a new body part." Look up with look your up. eyes for me. Yeah. Oh, with my eyes. Just I'm like, <laughs> "What?" Everyone does it. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, I'm such look an idiot. No, no, no. You're good. Everyone does it. It's my fault. Thanks, you're like cute. literally look up. <laughs> Yeah, kids don't have personal space. No, they do not. And we don't have kids yet, so it's always, and I love kids, I think they're adorable, but it's always funny for me. Yeah, I'll do that with kids, like, I'll be hanging out with one, and I'm like, where's your eyes? And they'll poke me. I know. I was like, I didn't mean to I know, I, I didn't I'm want that. Lashes. Please You're leave me alone. Right I know. Look up for me. Like, I'm going to be so devastated when the kids grow up and get older, but I will love being able to go potty by myself. No. That's, like, what I'm looking forward to more than anything else. <laughs> they come with you. They like are literally there and they go, can you see my hands? Can you see my hands? They put their hands under the door. Oh, They're like, what are so you doing, funny. mom? And Jane, we're trying to potty train her right now. Yeah. So anytime she hears the toilet flush when I'm in there, she goes, good job, mom. Good <laughs> job. So and cute. she'll clap for me. Oh, and that's I'm so like, nice. It's, yeah, it's that's so sort nice, of. sort of. And so sometimes nice. it's like, can I just have a moment? to not have you celebrate my potty. <laughs> Good job. That's very funny. Ugh. You have so much to look forward to one day. You do. You absolutely do. But you treat your dogs like gold. So your kids are gonna be so spoiled. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like that video you posted where you were <laughs> feeding them. I and did your dog them. have a bow in its hair? It looked oh, almost yes. like a crown when I looked at it from oh, far nice. away. I was she like, does. that is adorable. So she's the girl, so she always has a, a bow. But the boy is, like, even prettier. He's, like, the white one. So <laughs> I ordered him, like, this wedding collar that is, like, flowers. And it's silver and, like, light blue and white. So it matches my house. And I'm like, he will wear this now. Like, when he sits on my couch, he'll be, like, a decoration. And my cousin was like, he's a boy. He's, like, metrosexual. But he's he's going to be, dog. like, high-maintenance boy. Yeah, he doesn't He's going to be classy boy. dresser. Gender means nothing to animals, so it's, it's fine. You won't care. He Has he worn care. it yet? Yep, I'll show you before you leave. Yes. He has to wear it daily. Like, if someone's coming over, I'm like, hey, it's collar time. How does but, Rick feel about the collar? Oh, he doesn't like the collar because he told me my dog's a boy and he doesn't need <laughs> a collar. Stop kidding. That's too funny. <laughs> that really makes me laugh, actually. But they're cute. They're like so trained to like wear clothes because I used, I don't really anymore, but. You are like Elwood. <laughs> That's what my dog is named after. Elwood. <laughs> But when we lived in Utah, it was cold, so they wear little sweaters and stuff. Really? Yeah. That's so cute. So how, how long have you had your dogs? They're old. I think they're like seven. 
How much is that six. in dog years? How do you I don't calculate know. dog That's years? Sad. Hopefully not that old. Um, I don't know. Isn't it like seven years for every one dog year? I don't so, know. So let's see. That would be forty-nine. Yeah. So they're like middle age. Check me. They're whip out my <laughs> multiplication tables. So impressive. Oh, I know. I love this egg. Where did you get this egg? This one is a beauty blender. That's like the brand. I get them. I get these online, but I think Sephora and Ulta both have them. They're the best thing ever. They make you look like airbrush. Like they buff really? the foundation right into your skin. So are they reusable or is it like a mm -hmm. one time use deal? No, they're reusable. Up to how long do you think? Like how many times could you wash the thing Ooh, before you need question. to like? You can just kind of visually see like. <laughs> the eggs seem better to yeah. use. I buy like big packs of them, so they, and I'm pretty picky, if it doesn't look nice, I'm like, you're done. <laughs> you you are little. fired, egg. But you can keep them for a while. They're a little bit hard to clean because they're a sponge and the foundations are like kind of oily, like um, mm -hmm. water resistant, but they have their own brand of cleaner, like the Beauty Blender cleaner, and it's so amazing. I never tried it because I have all these brush cleaners and I used to clean them my own way, turn towards me. And then I bought the Beauty Blender cleaner and it changed my life. It's so easy to clean them now. Really? Yeah. So on Sarah, she's probably, she has like some pink undertones and some yellow. So I, I love how you call them undertones <laughs> instead of splotchy skin. No, no, no. See how no, Kelly actual, does that? actual <laughs> undertones. Every skin has an undertone. <laughs> I have pink I and yellow splotchy about. undertones. It was not how you had splotches, <laughs> but... No, like some people, you know how some people are more olive or like some people when they tan they're more I red and sometimes that. they're more like, like golden. Like yes. you notice that? So that's like the actual undertone. Uh -huh. So like real undertones, not skin imperfections, undertones. Do you use the same product on the neck that you do? everywhere else yeah and for day to day like you definitely don't need to do neck and chest I do it when we're on camera just because these lights are so bright that yes. they reflect like a little bit different off of the off of the face so I want it to look even so should you always apply foundation with some kind of sponge um it depends on the foundation some work better with brushes and some but most most foundations but never work. fingers you can do, you know, that's like personal preference. Fingers warm up the foundation and can rub it in, but I feel like... It seems to go on thicker when you use your fingers. It goes on thicker, and our hands have like natural oils and stuff. It's it's better to use a brush for sure, but if you, if you came up to me and you're like, I just love using my fingers, I would say more power to you. Use those fingers, Sarah. I use my fingers, <laughs> but I don't love it, so I need to find a way to apply my makeup. You'll like these sponges. If you want to try them before getting like the name brand, get the Real Techniques brand. I think it's like five dollars for two instead okay. of twenty for the one. They're a little bigger and they break a little bit easier. Like they'll tear when you mm -hmm. clean them sometimes, okay. but they do work really good. They're fun to start with before you commit. I know. Whew, gotta psych myself up before <laughs> I commit. Anytime I try something new, I'm always like having to give myself a pep talk, <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, you're amazing. Like with new makeup? Oh yeah, anything really. <laughs> anything I accomplish, you play I'm safe. like, I'm amazing. I just did this. Look up for me. Pep talk. My daughter's like inherited it. She like made up her own like Michaela I Am Awesome song. So cute. She's, adorable. She's like, you want to hear it, mom? I'm like, sure. She like sang it for me. It was so funny. That's adorable. I'll make you sing it now, little Yeah, I'm not gonna sing it. <laughs> Michaela's probably watching right now, going, No, Mom, Hi, sing it. Next time I see her, I'll request the song. Yes. She's so cute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is that, like, radiance concealer I was telling you about. So it's really um, thin. So is it the same gonna... one that you applied to my eyes? It's not. This okay. one's by MAC. This is called their Prep and Friend Stick. Go ahead and look up for me. And it just has a glow in it and they go it on so thin and they're hydrating and then they self set like you don't have to put powder on them so they don't um, crease on the under eyes and so should you always put concealer around your eyes and under eyes 
I usually do. You don't have to, but if you like more of like a medium to full coverage foundation, I feel like it looks more complete if you use concealer. Yes. And you definitely, it's better to do an actual concealer under your eyes instead of foundation, because usually foundation is more heavy. So how gentle. high up do you go with the foundation? I'm so trying to understand go, the process. No, you're good. So I go about to like the eye socket bone with the foundation. Okay. And then I take the concealer and I take it about to the edge of the brow and I draw kind of a little V. Oh. And I drag it down because I usually do like a half shade to a shade lighter of concealer just to brighten everything. Uh -huh. But if you don't drag that down, then it looks weird. You mm -hmm. have like raccoon eyes. So I like to brighten like the cheek area. So are you using the concealer right now to brighten my cheek area, or are you mm -hmm. blending with foundation? Go ahead and look up. No, I'm using the concealer, so I'm just buffing in that concealer. I like the sponge because it absorbs some of the excess product, so why this concealer is still wet, I'm absorbing it with the sponge. That way I leave you with as little product as possible under your skin, on your, under it. your eyes. It's hard to get out. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to set her face with a little bit of powder. This is Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. This is the best powder ever. Is it really? It's so good. It's just really light. Like, it's really, really finely milled. And it doesn't make anyone look cakey. Love it. I love it, too. Now that that's on, we're going to bronze her up a little bit. So I'm going to very lightly contour her. I know, yay for bronze. He will soon not be blinded. <laughs> so we're going to go in with a couple different things. This is Makeup Forever. This is a finishing powder. It's a powder with a little bit of coverage. And it's probably like four shades darker than, five shades darker than your skin tone. Is that what you should do with the bronzer? Is you don't want to go crazy dark? You don't want to go crazy dark. So I'm going to kind of contour you with this. And usually you want more of like a gray toned contour. Like you want it to look like an actual shadow. Like a real shadow is like a cooler tone. But I want to bronze you up today. So I'm going to use color with a little bit more warmth and then go in with a cool tone color. So where do you contour? So you usually do the cheekbones like right under the jaw mm -hmm. and then you can do around the chin if you want to and just above the forehead. So not right across the forehead but toward the top? Just like a little, like a little rainbow mm -hmm. and you do it right into your hairline. Okay. So usually you're correcting like if somebody had a big forehead you bring the contour down further. Okay. If you have a small forehead you don't contour yours. It's <laughs> perfect so we're just doing a nice Thanks, little... Thanks guys, nice I little have a bronze. great forehead. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go, this is um, just like a cool tone, regular contour shade. So the reason I put that warmer tone first on you is just to kind of prepare you for the contour. If I went in straight with like a heavy contour, mm -hmm. there would be like lines. Like I always like to layer so that the colors transition. Like light medium, or light medium turn. See, you're an artist. <laughs> All about blending, it's just tricks to the eyes. Do you feel like you picked up a lot of this in beauty school or is a lot of it just from your own experience of working with makeup? I think most of it's from just working with it. In beauty school, you know, when I wrote, we honestly didn't do, we didn't ever do makeup on clients. We had one chapter in our book with makeup and we spent two hours, like the teacher read it to us and then that was all. <laughs> and it was like the most basic. It's like, do the brows. This is where blush goes and add lips. I feel like makeup's come a long way. When I first um, was done with hair school and I did weddings and stuff like mm -hmm. that, like most of the time people wouldn't even book like a makeup artist for the wedding. They would get their hair done for sure. And now I feel like that's it's true. almost opposite. People do kind of like the natural hair down and then they'll go like full glam for makeup. Mm -hmm. so it's funny to see the trends change. They probably teach more makeup in cosmetology school now I would assume. Mm -hmm. I would hope so. Yeah. I gotta give you some press. Yes. Okay we're gonna go in. This is an actual bronzer. So now that I've contoured you and okay. we did a little bit of highlighting with that concealer we lightened up this area. I'm gonna bronze you. This is MAC. This is called Give Me Sun. I call it Give Me Spray Tan because it's basically <laughs> orange. Give me sun <laughs> since yes. I, I reflect light. <laughs> but it is that like 
It has an orange undertone, so you want to go in so light with it, and you go where like the sun would hit you. So top okay. of the forehead, top of the nose, the chin, top of the cheekbones, so light. Like if you go on dark, it's like, yeah, it's orange. But it literally is the perfect little bronzy color. Awesome. It works for a light to medium dark skin. So we're getting fanciful makeup done today, but mm -hmm. how would we simplify? So simplify just by doing like a multi-use product. Like I used four and a half different things to contour you. So you could just do one. You could get, um, I would buy like a contour little palette that has like your okay. contour and your bronzer in it. Cause a lot of them mm. do. And then you can use the same brush, just contour really quick and add the bronze. Or you can just, depending on how much time you have, you can skip the contour. Mm -hmm. You have nice natural bone structure, so you don't really need to contour. I'm doing it for the camera mm -hmm. and stuff, but you could just add a little bronzer. Okay. And then I always add it a little bit to the neck and a little bit to the chest so everything's mm -hmm. even. So everyone's necks are always lighter. My white neck. <laughs> everyone's is so light. Actually, people that are like more tan have a, a bigger color variation between their neck and their chest. Really? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna think to myself every time <laughs> I'm super jealous of all these tan girls. I'm gonna be like, my neck is less white, or no, it's probably still more white, but still. Because <laughs> they'll tan more. I'm gonna be like, I'm more balanced. You are so balanced. I'm gonna add a little bit of a glow, and this is something you can skip too if you're in your, if you're in a hurry. I hope like you face. you always look so put together. Like you always have your makeup nicely done. You're so nice, Julie. I know I have some faux pas things going on on my face. So I'm always looking at it going, that's not right, but I don't have time to figure out what's you wrong with it. You are too hard on yourself. You <laughs> always look so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the under eye. This is um, It Cosmetics, and this is so good. They have the best under eye products. They were developed by plastic surgeons. Yeah. <laughs> look up for me. So this is supposed to make me look like I've had plastic surgery, which is so ideal. <laughs> That's no. wonderful. <laughs> Guys, I just had plastic surgery done by Julie Buck. <laughs> that should be the natural transition, like for career-wise, for makeup artists. They should go into <laughs> plastic surgery because you already understand the face. She has. She has her second so career lined it, up. Yeah. <laughs> Going to med school. <laughs> the big bucks right there. She's going to be like 50 years old. Her hands will have like arthritis that she'll go into. <laughs> I'm too squeamish. I couldn't. That's true. I, I don't think do I could do it either. Couldn't slice. Okay, we're going to consult the lash book. The great book of lashes. Yes. She has some lashes. I'm for so you. excited. So okay. am I not having blush? Do you we're just do, do bronzer? We're gonna do blush last. Oh, so what okay. I like to do is do blush after the lips so mm. I can see how much color you need. Oh. <laughs> so I kind of have like a funny way of doing things. So I'm gonna do your lashes and then we're gonna do some shadow under your eyes, then your mascara, then your lips, then your blush. It's gonna be so fun. So excited. Have you worn false lashes before, right? I have. It was not a good experience. It was not I a totally good experience. like bought probably a really cheap pair that I shouldn't have. Uh -huh. I should have just said no and walked away at Target. <laughs> but one day I was like, my eyelashes are driving me crazy. <laughs> so I'm totally gonna make them beautiful and they're gonna look fabulous. But like I bought a really cheap glue or something, so then they kept oh, like yeah. coming off. I'm pretty sure that I was recording screencasts for my students and oh I was probably no, like, had so like an sad. eyelash coming off. They're like, wow, our, our teacher's a hot mess. Oh my gosh. No, they never said that, but you know, they could have been thinking it. It's I'm possible. sure they were. But yeah, no, it was bad. It was bad news and I've never gone back. I've never gone back. I'll leave it to the professionals. <laughs> well, you can keep these and you can practice. And then I can just show up at your door <laughs> and I'll be like, Julie, I need <laughs> lashes today. And I'll help you out. <laughs> okay. That's the problem after all this, Julie. You Let's make everyone look me. so beautiful that we're all going to be like at your doorstep. And then I send you off to your own. 
yeah. raise the bar too high, the expectation of what we want ourselves to look like. <laughs> no. Everyone has done so far. It's just so pretty. Well, you'll forever have your own video. Your makeup. I'm, that's why I'm asking okay. all these questions because I have no idea what you've done yeah, to me or what I look like. But when I look at it and I go, "Wow, that was amazing! How did Julia do that?" I'm like, "Let me pull up my video. <laughs> Open for me. Don't want you to get stuck. Good. Stay looking down. Perfect. Okay. While those dry, I'm gonna do your lips. Are you supposed Hi. to feel them? Yeah. So you're gonna feel them until it dries. They feel really weird when the glue's tacky okay. and then they become part of you and you will not feel them anymore. All right, <laughs> I'm so excited for them to become part of me. So I'm gonna mix Twig, these are both a Mac, Twig and Velvet Teddy. Ooh. Twig I think is like made for you, it's so pretty. Twig. So pretty, but I'm gonna mix a little bit of Velvet Teddy because it has like a peachy undertone. So I kind of want like a mauvey peach. Those like are not the same color, but I want it. So you're like, I'm going to create it. And it's going to look good. So you definitely look good with like the cool tones, the mobs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But if you kind of don't stray too far from that family, you can dabble into peaches and everything. Good to know. Just don't go too orange. So orange is what you want to stay away from. I would say. Do you wear orange ever? No, I figured that one out very, <laughs> very quickly by trying it on one time and I was like, wow, I look horrible. I love like color and what it does for people. Like it's just so cool to see like one person's color is like yeah. not another person's or like it's just really cool to see. rock out. <laughs> I know. I told you you would love our music. It's amazing. It's pretty great. So I do the lips just like the glue dries. It takes a little bit to dry, but you do want it to set completely before you mess with it. I'm going to do um, mascara okay. over the lashes just to blend. You have great lashes. Like your own are pretty dang thick, so I'm going to blend those into this. The extensions. But if I go too early and put mascara on those, it'll like lift those lashes right off because they won't be dry. I can feel them disappearing. Yes, told you. They will become one with Sarah. You like you were your own. Just a little bit for me. if you want it to last all day is to definitely do a liner and like I was telling you earlier like a really creamy liner is not going to be as long lasting as like a, a more stiff dry liner so how can you tell when you're shopping if it's a stiff or a creamy liner you can just swatch it on your hand like if it just glides on like almost too easy and it's probably too creamy. I'll show you. And a lot of the ones that are like, like usually the pencils are made of plastic or they're made of wood. Like a lot of times the wood kind of absorbs the extra moisture, so they're usually a little more dry. Okay. Like I think MAC ones are wood and they're really good. But it's preference. Like if you're the type and your lipstick just wears really well, like you don't have a problem with it coming off and stuff like that throughout the day, you can use any, any pencil you want. So are you applying like a long lasting color stay type lipstick or is this just a regular so lipstick? So this is just regular. So this is by MAC and theirs are really pigmented. And for a lipstick they are pretty long wear but they're not, like this will wear just average on you. If like if I was doing your makeup for an event or just honestly for anything, I would probably line you first with a pencil to prepare your lips so that it lasts longer. 
Do you do that over all the lip or is it just the outside? I do it over all the lip um, just so that it creates sort of that drier base. And then it sticks to and it better? And it sticks, yeah. Or if you don't want to do liner, like one thing you can do is really lightly blot your lips with a tissue after you put on the lipstick and then add like a super light layer of powder, like that powder that I put all over mm -hmm. your face and then it mattifies it and then add a second layer of lipstick and that will make it last. Like that's like an old movie trick. They would do that like back in the day, but it works super good. But honestly, usually I think like for personal wear, you can just put it on and then just keep, mm -hmm. lipstick is so easy to reapply. Yeah, it is. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna take a teeny little brush and just add a little color under her eyes. I don't wanna make her under eye area too thick. Go ahead and look up. I just really wanna restock a little. Look up. There you go. So if I wanted less of a smoky eye and more of a neutral kind of everyday wear look, what color palette should I stick with? You can do, I, I would like purple mauves on you, or these are um, like neutral toned browns. Like mm -hmm. see how that one's more cool and that one's more like more brown. Mm -hmm. I'm mixing the two and then I, um, I added like a pink brown in your okay. crease. So I like a little bit of the warm, the warmer tones on you because you have that like hazel in your eyes and I like to make that pop. But your skin tone tends to pull more warm, so I don't want to use like an actual like super warm shadow on you. So you could do browns, you could do purples. Um, probably wouldn't do like navies. No, I've never or gone that silvers. direction. <laughs> when you wear purples, do you like the um? like the cool like blue toned purples or do you like the more red like pinky purples? Um, I guess I probably, one of the purples I use is more of like a deep purple and like I don't know if it's more blue based or pink based. I'm Next time sure. you wear it, pay attention and that's probably like the shade of color that looks best on you. Like I feel like people gravitate usually mm -hmm. <laughs> to what looks best on them. You just have to pay attention to the undertones. Yeah, I don't think I've ever analyzed the undertones. I do know that the palette that I use tends to have more of a, it has like a pinky mauve as kind of the base. Yeah, look up for me. And that's really pretty on you. You don't have to stick with one color. You can have a couple of different palettes with different Yeah, different and I'm tones. looking for that second palette. Cause I've experimented with me. more of the neutral tones before. But I think, like you said, I've gone with more of the warmer ones and they just don't look right. Yeah. Like I look very washed out or, so I've had a hard time finding something more neutral. Yes. That looks okay with my skin tone. Yeah, I like warm colors on you, but you definitely pull warm. So I would try to do, look for something with a like a slight warm undertone, mm -hmm. like a little bit of gold. Or like rose golds would be really pretty on you, like more of a, a kind of pinky gold. Go ahead and look down. So what I'm doing now, I just want to press her natural lashes right into these extensions. The blinking break. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good job. And you can look over here. Good. Just look away from the brush and that will you out. And I did, I actually did a pretty soft smoky eye on you. Like I did the smoky technique. I did dark all across your lids. I really um, buffed the liner right into your lash line. Go ahead and look over this way. I, I didn't go crazy. I actually didn't take you too dark. Like this is very wearable for a day. I just wanted to intensify your eyes. Okay, go ahead and look up and I'm gonna do some amazing long bottom lashes. Yeah, some blush. Are you a gloss girl on your lips? Do you like gloss or do you like just lipstick? Um, I use usually use like a matte okay. type of lipstick, but then I'm allergic to a lot of glosses. Oh, really? Um, yeah, my lips like blow up like a blowfish. Oh and so I do like usually actually a layer of Vaseline on top and it okay. gives it a little sheen. A little bit of a sheen. Yes. 
Like I can I can wear a gloss for a few minutes, but then after that I'm like <laughs> I gotta wipe it off. After before. that it's now. Yeah, I developed different allergies after each kid I had. So like after I had Michaela, I developed a really bad nickel allergy, and then oh my goodness. I think it was after Andrew or David, I developed like a really bad allergy to lots of different like skin product type things. Oh man, so it's funny. That's crazy. Allergies are no joke too. Oh yeah, it's and it was the weirdest crazy. thing because I couldn't figure out what had happened because I was using the same products I'd always used, but I'm like. Things are swelling everywhere, <laughs> and it hurt really bad. Like it wasn't just like, oh, I swelled up. It was like, it hurt really, really bad. I'm like, what is happening? So for the longest time, I wouldn't even wear lipstick. But then I figured out if I kind of do a base coat, a protective layer of Vaseline, then then, you're okay. then I'm okay. So I just have to like. Well, good to know. Be careful. Look your teeth. You look so great on your teeth. I do. Yeah, just look at a little. Hey, Lick it. I'll wipe it. Good, good. Is it off? Yes. Okay. We don't want a camera tea, close yeah. up with that. No. That's horrible. <laughs> okay, so because I prepared her skin with those bronzy colors and the Give Me Sun, the bronzer, I can do a warm blush on her. So I did this one's MAC. It is not labeled. <laughs> it's um it's like a, a peachy bronze kind mm. of. But it has a lot of brown in it too. Like this orange one I would not do on you. I think it would be too much. But because I did all those bronzers, you can wear this warmer toned blush. Yay! Yay, it looks so pretty. I'm so excited for you to see. Your fall makeup palette. This is like very fall. Is it? This yes. is my fall look, guys. Yes. It's my fall look. And you're even dressed for fall with like your olive That's pants. True. You're just so on trend. Okay. Oh, it's super pretty. <laughs> you're so oh, gorgeous. Like it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being my model. I love it. And thank you everyone for watching. It was fun to hang out with Sarah. I'm live every weeknight, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. Thanks for watching. Bye.